بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق والمرسلين أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الله سبحانه وتعالى سز ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا لتسكنوا إليها وجعل بينكم مودة ورحمة In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is showing us this divine, merciful bond between the wife and the husband. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ It's a clear sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is showing us because we are a human. We are not animals. And the relation between man and a woman as a wife, as a husband and a wife, Islam consider it one of the signs that a person has to consider and think about and appreciate as a matter of fact. Because through that relation, we are building a new society. We are pumping a new blood to the society. Every new family, that means a new improvement to the society, if it is good, and vice versa. It could be constructive, it could be destructive. And this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us through this ayah, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ One of his signs, and خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا Among this human race, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made such kind of bond between man and woman through marriage. مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ Among you. Not from any, among aliens and you, or jinn and you, angels and you, among you, men and fusikum. You belong to the same humanity. You belong to the same responsibility. You belong to the same compassion. You belong to, to the same mercy. You belong to the same path. You belong to the same equi uh, justice. You belong to the same message. You belong to the same tranquility. And you belong to this way of improving society through your marriage that's going to generate a new blood, new generation, a new constructive beings to humanity. So your wife has rights in the society as you have rights in the society. Because you belong to this message, to this race, race as a human I'm talking, not as black and white. I'm not talking about ethnicity. I'm, I'm talking about a human fellow. This humanity, in order to continue, is going to be through that channel. This proper channel, which we call it marriage between the wife and the husband, man and woman. Now, people are ruining, ruining it. People, they have different ideas about marriage. Is marriage really between man and woman? That's their stuff. They deal with it. They deal with it as an event, and they deal with it as a consequences, because it's going to have so many destructive consequences. But from our side, what we are concerned about this normal situation, which we call it marriage. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً 
between man and woman, between the wife and the husband, we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as a matter of fact, put between them mercy, mawadda wa rahma, love and mercy, kindness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making it clear. Marriage is not a place of a battlefield. It's not a place to fight. It's not a place to show how strong you are. It's not a place to revenge. It's not a place for carelessness. It's not a source of carelessness. When there is marriage, that means you are thinking about mawadda wa rahma. Love kindness and on the other side mercy compassion this is marriage islam considers marriage this way ومن اياته ان خلق ان خلق لكم من انفسكم ازواجا لتسكنوا اليها when you are dwelling together under the same roof in the same house that means you are establishing a bond based on this mercy, on this kind of love. To make your life full of tranquility. This is the first step in marriage. And that's why from the beginning, when you know you are going to be the father and she knows from the beginning she is going to be a mother at one, at one point then when you are going to get married do not just pick or choose or accept anyone before you say yes for marriage make sure you are Choosing the proper person. Because this person, you are going to live with him or her forever. That's the plan of marriage. That's the only person who is going to keep seeing you as a young one. Because he is the only person who can keep your beautiful image in his or her mind. No matter how old you are going to get, no matter how sick you are going to be, no matter how pressure you are gonna, is going to be on your shoulder, all that burden, at one point you are going to be responsible about. The only person who is going to give you comfort comfortable situation and make you live and tranquility and keep giving you hope is your partner and that's the beauty of marriage and because of your sacrifices because of the sacrifices of the parents then we are gonna have a better members in the society better generation, a good, good kids in the society. So from the beginning, I have to pick this proper person. And that's why so many narrations, before you get married, choose, use your rational thinking, analyze, do not just follow your emotion. Marriage is not built only on emotion. Emotions are important, but that's not everything. Beauty could be something important to you, but that does not mean it is everything. And rational thinking, intelligent character is important maybe for you, but that's not everything. When you are picking your partner, you have to think, first of all, about his logical thinking, rationality. Is he a rational person or is she a rational person or not? 
It's not good enough to say he's, he has a good faith. Well, he has a good faith, but let's say he, he or she could be dumb. Is that a solution? Guess what? So what will happen when I'm raising my kids? If the parents are not up to the challenge, they don't have common sense. Did that help me because, oh, oh I like this guy, that's it, done? Or because he likes that lady, done deal? No, you have to go beyond that. You have to give your intelligence, your rational thinking, rational thoughts, you have to give it a chance. Plus, you add to it the chance from the emotions. And then, your decision could be more worth it and will have better consequences. They say one, at one time a person came to the Prophet وسلم, and he asked the Prophet, Oh Prophet Muhammad, I need an advice. The Prophet looked at him, he said, If I give you an advice, are you willing to consider it, to follow it? He said, Yes. هل أنت مستوصا إذا أنا أوصيتك? Are you going to take care of it? He said, yes. Second time, the Prophet emphasized on this statement. Are you going to consider what I'm going to tell you, what I'm going to advise you about this person? He said, yes. For the third time, so the Prophet is showing the importance of this message. Are you sure you are going to consider what I'm going to advise you? He said, yes. Then the Prophet said, إذا أنت هممت بأمر فتدبر عاقبته. If you are going to do something, do not just look at this item, this issue, this problem. Do not just consider the event or the situation. Go beyond this. Check the consequences of it. إذا أنت هممت بأمر فتدبر عاقبته. Look at, consider the consequences of it. Is it. Does it have good consequences? Is going to have a good result or bad result? فَيَكُ خَيْرًا فَمْضِهِ If it is good, the consequences of that doing or that work is good, then go for it. And if we're to be bad, stop it. Don't go for it. Same thing when we come to a big, important thing like marriage. You look at it. Is it, does it fit Islamic standards? I, you know, uh, you know, a person might say, I like the, this lady, but she is not muhajjaba, she does not pray. You know, she might lie, she might, you know, do haram things. She is a drunk most of the time. Then what? What kind of marriage is this? Your question should be, is that lady going to be a good mom for my kids? That's the first question. You are not just marrying, you know, a set of standards. She's going to be taking care of your kids, taking care of the house, taking care of you, and you are going to be taking care of her, taking care of the kids, taking care of the house also. There is a responsibility there. And if you just consider the beauty factor, let's say, you might buy something very important. You have been dreaming about for years. You buy it, you use it a couple times, then you keep forgetting about it. It's like you buy a rose. And definitely there is a big difference between marriage and buying. I'm just giving you an example. Something is going to be with you. Because your wife is your soul partner. But this is just a metaphoric one to simplify things. You buy, you get a rose. You get a rose, you put it, you like it. 
The first day you take care of it, the second day you like it, you keep smelling it, you enjoy looking at it. Then a couple days later, you forget about it. It's gone. Especially when that rose start declining. It's not as beautiful as before. It's not as appealing as you, you know, as before. That's a problem. So once the marriage is built on some materialistic things, the marriage will fail. Because if you get married, he is rich. Because he is rich, I want to get married with him. Guess what? At a point you might be richer or he might be poor. Then what's, what else? What's next? If you are enjoying marriage because of the big house, nice car, good spending, there is a point you might lose everything. So what's the solution? If you get married because of the shape, because of the image, because of certain attributes, materialistic, one, materialistic ones, yeah, there is a point. You are going to lose all that because a human, keeps, a human being keeps it changing. Maybe better, maybe worse. So you connect yourself to more important stuff. Yes, this is considered. It's a nice factor that it's a nice added value, which is nothing wrong with it if I have it. But I do not make my call based on all that. I have more important stuff, more important stuff, which is what, which is this relation, this chemistry that's going to create mercy, tranquility, peaceful family, peaceful house, productive house, a house that is not full of clashes, a house that's not full of problems, of fights. A house that has no place for crime, drugs. A house that is full of morality, good attitudes, trust, divine message. A house that the angels will be proud of. Not a house that the angels are not willing to even take a look at. And through that, brothers and sisters, I can reduce the probability of having a dysfunctional family through the first step. That's why from the beginning you have to choose the right person. Do not let some ahadith said, do not, some narrations mentioned, do not let your wife get married with a person who is drunk. Why? Because he's not going to protect her. He's not going to take care of her rights. That's a big thing. He's not going to be a good father. He's not going to be a supportive person in, this, in the house for the family members. He's not. He's drunk. He's careless. This is a very important thing. And that's why we have several narrations. Al-Islam considered what? Morality, ethical dimension, إِذَا جَاءَكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ خُلُقَهُ وَدِينَهُ Sometimes he, he could be a Muslim. Oh, I am a Muslim. Yes, he is a Muslim. That means Islam is to be submissive to God in a very peaceful, tranquil, to be submissive to God in a very peaceful way. Guess what? This husband, or future husband, he is Muslim. He is submissive to all people, but not to the orders and commands of Allah. 
He is so nice with everyone, but he is not nice with his wife. He has to be Muslim. That means he is obeying God. He is not arrogant when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering him to be good with his family. That's what religion means. You believe in religion. You do not just believe in sawm and fasting, and you do not believe in the rights that you have to take care and consider when it comes to your wife. This is religion, it's a one package deal. You cannot have take, tweak religion, take one piece and forget about the others. When you say, I am a Muslim, that you believe in this constitution. That's why من ترضون خلقه ودينه دينه that means he believe in this religion. He is on the right path. He does not deny the obligations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put a burden on him. And same thing for the wife. خلقه it's obvious. He has to be moral. He has to be with a good characteristics, with good characteristics, with a good personality. Then if he is good, morally accepted, and his religion is accepted, then this is a good husband. This is a good wife. This is the way we, things go. Otherwise, the marriage will be dysfunctional. Yes, it's going to look very beautiful. You might spend thousands and thousands of dollars to have a beautiful wedding, to rent a beautiful car, to go to a beautiful resort, to rent an expensive, an expensive hotel, let's say, room in a very expensive area, buying tickets, taking vacation, and yet the marriage is not successful. Why? Because you did not follow the proper tools, the proper outlines. You just invented your own. You did not consider Islam as a message. You were tweaking it to make it, you know, feasible to fit your needs, not more, not less. And this is very dangerous. No, from the beginning, let's have it based on good things. In the beginning, as a wife and a husband, your constitution is Quran. Your constitution is what Ahl al-Bayt and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam taught us. And by that, I will have a peaceful, functional family. And that's why, when we look at the marriage of Ali and Fatima, and even before that, we look at the marriage of the Prophet and Khadija. People, they do not talk about their big, impressive wedding. People, they do not, historian, they do not talk about this expensive, beautiful, impressive wedding dress that Khadija had. No. This is gone. Nobody even consider, considers that. They talk about this highly functioning family. A family of Muhammad, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam and Lady Khadija Bintu Khuwailid was able to deliver one significant, important, the most significant, important lady on earth, Fatima al Zahra. Salam, that we keep talking about her. And we keep talking about Khadija. And we keep talking about the Prophet Muhammad. And they keep giving us hope, giving us lessons, giving us, teaching us. Helping us to improve our lives through their marriage, through their relation, through
through the, the way they established a good family. Khadija, they, they used to say, was a rich lady. She picked the Prophet Why? Because Muhammad was rich Because the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had a highly integrated personal, personality. He was very good person. He had very good values. He was a real human being. That's why she said, this is my choice. The result, the result of this marriage, a lady like Fatima alayhi salam. Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad and Khadija. Alayhi salam ajma'in. This is, this is the way you look at it. But just to follow your desire, to follow your lust, to, vo to follow your emotions, to follow your needs without respecting Islamic outlines, without considering the next step, without considering that this relation is the foundation of a new generation, is going to be good or bad, you are careless about all the responsibilities, then definitely there is a big chance you are going to have a very dysfunctional family. And your gen next generation, your offspring, will not be as good as you. Because you, so many reasons. This is an example. Another example is the marriage of Ali and Fatima. Some people, they think it's just because they are sacred, because they are Imam, because they are prophets, because, because we have this sacred offspring. It's not just because of this, brothers and sisters. It's not just because Fatima alayhi salam is infallible. And because Ali alayhi salam also is sinless. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them that way. Definitely then we had Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein and a lady, significant lady like Zainab alayhi salam. No, not just because of this. Being a sinless person, being an imam, that does not mean it's going to force you to be a good person. Allah knew from the beginning, whether I make you an imam or not, or I make you a prophet or not, you're going to be a good character. From the beginning. Allah does not just bring a lazy, careless, irresponsible person and give him asma, that means he is sinless now, and tell him, okay, now you are a prophet. No, this is not the case. Allah from the beginning knew those people are special people. And that's why they deserved to be sinless, to be Lady Fatima, to be the prophet, to be the imam. And if you take Let's assume you can do this. You, you take this level from them, they're going to stay good. They will never change because this is their set of moralities. This is it. So when we look at their lives, we do not just, oh, he is Imam Ali, she is Fatima, I cannot be like them. No. Imam Ali did not pick any lady. Imam Ali picked a person that can match his purity, his piety, his responsibility, that fits his message, which is the message of Islam that the Prophet وسلم, delivered to us. And that's why when you seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah's satisfaction and what Allah wants from you, then Allah will compensate you. You will be rewarded with a, a good offspring, good children, good kids. 
And that's why from Ali and Fatima, we had Al Hassan and Al Hussein, Sayyida Shabab Ali Al Jannah. Not any offspring, Imams. And they used to put efforts with their kids. They used to put efforts to raise them in a good way. They do not just leave them, oh, they are going to be imams, so they are good. No, 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 that's not the case. And raising the kids, and how that should be, and whose responsibility is that? Is it the mother? Is it the father? All that, inshallah, we are going to be talking about later on. Aqulu qawli hadha. وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين